in an ongoing quest to understand the rapture and the second coming of Jesus. This video is my findings concerning the saints that returns with Jesus at his second coming. It will not be according to a surface reading of scripture, but rather, a deeper understanding that just a surface reading will never reveal. Not because it is actually hidden from us. But because of the way we ascribe meanings to words today. Which is not how they understood it back in their day. This study will confirm, and verify, who are the saints, that returns with Jesus, at his second coming. Let's get started. I will start with the book of Jude. Scripture says, And Enoch also, the seventh from Adam, prophesied of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints to execute judgment upon all, and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and of all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners have spoken against him. Here, Jude quotes from Enoch, a prophet, the seventh from Adam. And he says the Lord will return with ten thousands of his saints. This is speaking of his second coming, and it is Enoch who is the first to speak of it. Who are the saints? Enoch was very early in the beginning, and his knowledge of heaven, was made known to him, by the angels of God, who dwelled in heaven, and gave him a tour of it. And at that time, he saw no human beings, in heaven. Therefore, Enoch referred to the holy angels of heaven, as saints, for that is all who dwelled there, and he had no knowledge of the saints, who would become the church, in the last days. Moses on his deathbed, also spoke of the second coming of the Lord, with ten thousands of his saints, quoting from Enoch. And in that day, the word saint was H. 6944 in the Hebrew. And it meant holy, a holy or hallowed thing, a dedicated or consecrated thing, which are all characteristics of the saints that are the holy angels of God. Then, after some generations had passed, Zechariah slightly quoted Enoch saying, and ye shall flee to the valley of the mountains, for the valley of the mountains shall reach unto Azel. Yea, ye shall flee, like as ye fled from before the earthquake in the days of Uzziah king of Judah. And the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with thee. By the time Zechariah made that statement, the meaning of the word saints had changed, from H. 6944 to H6918. And the meaning had a slight change, which includes its derivative, H6942, to specifically name the word saint, as an angel, who is a saint, as well as a believing human, who is a saint also. For they are both holy, dedicated to God, and consecrated, for his pleasure, and the meaning is derived from the text. Now let's look at some verses of scripture, with the word saint, and figure out from the text, which meaning to apply to it. But to the saints that are in the earth, and to the excellent, in whom is all my delight. This meaning of saints, is H6918, and it can mean either an angel, or a human believer. But because it specifically mentions saints on the earth, we know it has reference to a man, and not an angel, in this case. I also want to note, that the statement, the saints in the earth, presupposes that there is also saints that are in heaven, of another kind. Or else why would you note, the earth? And the heavens shall praise thy wonders, O Lord, thy faithfulness also in the congregation of the saints. Here again, we have the word saints. And according to the wording of the text, it is speaking of the angels, as it is the heavens that are praising his wonders. Also, that praising is taking place in the congregation of the saints, which is, the regular meeting God has, to receive an update from his saints, the angels. 
Now, we will look at Daniel when he had a vision of the last days, while he was by the river. Notice how he addressed the messenger angels, that spoke to each other, and him. Scripture says, Then I heard one saint speaking, and another saint said unto the certain saint which spake, How long shall be the vision concerning the daily sacrifice and the transgression of desolation to give both the sanctuary and the host to be trodden underfoot? And he said unto me, Unto two thousand and three hundred days, then shall the sanctuary be cleansed. Here, in the vision, Daniel interacted with the messenger angels by addressing them as saints. Behold, he putteth no trust in his saints. Yea, the heavens are not clean in his sight. This is saying, God does not put trust in his saints the angels, for it is because of some. Even the heavens are not clean. When Satan rebelled against God, and took one third of the angels with him. It pitted angels against angels. It forced saints against saints. And for this reason, there is constant war in the heavens, the unseen realm, and it is no longer pure as it was in the beginning. But at the appointed time, when God comes to reign on the earth, it will be then, that he will cast down the powers, of the host of heaven. And the Lord make you to increase and abound in love one toward another, and toward all men, even as we do toward you. To the end he may establish your hearts unblameable in holiness before God, even our Father, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints. When Paul wrote this letter to the Thessalonians, the Bible didn't exist. And when he said, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ with all his saints, he was referring back to the prophet Enoch, who is the first on record to have spoken these words. And at that time, the saints only had reference to the angels of God, not the coming of Jesus with saved men. By the time Paul was writing letters to the church, the meaning of the word saints was G40 and was more relaxed. It means, a most holy thing. The most holy thing of the earth are the saints, who are saved men. But the most holy thing in heaven, are the angels, who were called saints, before the creation of man. In three of the Gospels, when Jesus referenced his second coming, he also referred to the saying of Enoch. But he did not use the word saint, to leave us wondering, is he speaking of saints that are men, or saints that are angels? He named the saints as angels saying, When the Son of Man shall come in His glory, and all the holy angels with Him, then shall He sit upon the throne of His glory. These are the words of Jesus, as recorded by Matthew. And I believe Jesus, when quoting Enoch, purposely left out the word saints, and replaced it with angels, to avoid this very confusion, we are having today. Whosoever therefore shall be ashamed of me, and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him also shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he cometh in the glory of his Father, with the holy angels. These are the words of Jesus, as recorded by Mark. And I believe Jesus, when quoting Enoch, purposely left out the word saints, and replaced it with angels, to avoid this very confusion, we are having today. Ask yourself. If there are saints who are men in heaven, at his second coming, why didn't Jesus just say the generic word saints, which would include both men and angels? It is because, there are no saints that are men in heaven to return with, at his second coming. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words of him shall the Son of Man be ashamed, when he shall come in his own glory, and in his Father's, and of the holy angels. These are the words of Jesus, as recorded by Luke. 
And I believe Jesus when quoting Enoch, purposely left out the word saints, and replaced it with angels, to avoid this very confusion, we are having today. But I want you to notice how this is worded. It says, Jesus will come in His own glory, which is His own brilliant light, and in the glory of His Father, which is that same, brilliant light, and of the angels, who are clothed in their own, radiant light. Here is an announcement of the entire household of God. The Father, the Son, and the angels of heaven. If man had been raptured, seven years earlier, and lived with the Father, the Son, and the angels of heaven, in their shiny spirit body, for seven years. Why do you suppose Jesus did not mention them as coming, in glory, when the whole house of God was mentioned, as coming in glory, except them? It is because they are not. There. Now, I want to show you something that I found very interesting. This is a scripture that speaks of the saints that are men, coming to live with the saints who are angels, currently living in the household of God. Scripture says, Now therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God. Because of the blood of Jesus, we who were no saints, were made saints, by the washing and regeneration in His blood. And now, we are citizens of the household of God in heaven, along with the angel saints, that are currently residing there. How cool is that? Giving thanks unto the Father, which hath made us meet to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in light. This is saying, God has made us fit to be a partaker to receive an inheritance of light, as are the angel saints, who currently are abiding in light. Do you now, understand, it was the angels who were first known as saints, and then, man came to follow. And from the preponderance of the evidence, the saints spoken of as coming with Christ at His second coming, is speaking of the saints who are angels, and not the saints who are men. Now, I want to tackle the misinformation, about our coming back with Jesus, on a white horse, in Revelation chapter 19. For starters, this event is not the second coming of Jesus, but Him coming in the air, out from His kingdom, established in the top of the mountains of Israel, at His second coming, at the opening of the sixth seal. Moving on from there. Scripture says, And I saw heaven opened, and behold a white horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. As I previously mentioned, this is not his second coming. Scripture says there is nothing new under the sun, and patterns repeats itself in cycles. Jesus came back to earth at the opening of the sixth seal, to the war of the nations, as noted in Zechariah 14, during the last days. Here again, Jesus comes to fight against the war of many nations, Armageddon, on behalf of Israel, on a white horse, as noted in Ezekiel 38 and 39, in the latter days. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. It is here, that it is assumed, that we follow after Jesus on white horses, because it states that those riding the white horses, are wearing fine linen, clean and white, the same as the wife of the Lamb, as noted in verses 7 and 8. Today, there are armies in heaven arrayed in fine linen clean and white. During the days of Daniel there were also, armies in the heavens fighting in fine garments clean and white. And in both cases, they are fighting a war where the wife of the Lamb, dressed in fine linen clean and white, is not present, nor needed, to cause the war to be successful. But all of this is a moot point, because this is not the second coming of Jesus. If you would like to receive confirmation that the second coming of Jesus occurred at the opening of the sixth seal, watch my video titled, Opening the Sixth and Seventh Seals, like you never heard it explained before.
It will be attached to this video at the end. One of the talking points of the pre-tribulation rapture believers is Jesus comes to the clouds of the earth, his feet never touching the ground, ahead of the tribulation period, and catches up all the saints in the clouds, and takes them back to heaven with himself, and they remain there for seven years. Once the seven years has expired, the saints then, returns with him back to the earth, riding on white horses, noted as his second coming, because this time, his feet touches the ground. Now, with a surface reading of scripture, this is actually true. But when you search it out deeply, that is not the case at all. And the stumbling block is the word saints. Saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his saints. I believe this lesson is an exhaustive study on the word saints, and according to the preponderance of the evidence, the word saints in this instance is speaking of the saints who are the angels of God, coming back with Jesus at his second coming, and not the saints who are men. Therefore, at his second coming, Jesus will arrive to the clouds of the earth, with all his saints, which are angels. Then, he will resurrect the dead in Christ, and change those who are alive and remain to his coming, and rapture them into the clouds of the air. And from that point, both the saints that are angels, and the saints that are men, will accompany him down to the earth. The title of this video is, Who are the saints returning with Jesus? I am firmly convinced from my study of Scripture. They are the holy angels of God. When Jesus comes back to the earth, he will be moving his whole house, and household, even all his servants, the saints which are angels, from the third heaven, to the earth with him. All the saints that are men today has a glorious and eternal life ahead of them, which will be shared with the saints in light that are angels, that are currently in his household. If you wish to meet the unseen part of your family, the angel saints of God, tell God, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Tell God, I believe Jesus died for my sins. Tell God, I believe He was dead and buried. And tell God, I believe He was raised on the third day. If your confession is from the heart, then, at the day of His second coming, you will become a partaker of the saints in light. Thanks for watching. The place that Jesus goes to prepare for us is a place in his household, which he will bring with himself for us to live in, with his holy saints the angels. If this study has helped you, please share it with your family and friends, and subscribe and comment, and give it a thumbs up. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. Amen.